好，那我们的议程时间差不多开始了。那今天的这个主讲者是 Daniel Black， 那他在 Mario DB 是一个全方位的角色。那他开始这个职业是 DBA 的身份开始，那现在是 Mario DB 这个 Foundation 的 CIO。那今天欢迎他为我们带来一个精彩的演讲，掌声鼓励一下。Thank you, everyone.、Uh, Yes, thank you for that introduction. I、uh, won't say any more th about me, but I will actually say that I am not a Rust expert by any means.、Um, I have very basic knowledge, and most of the material is thanks to、uh, Trevor Gross、uh, from University of Michigan, who's、um, uh, written the、uh, traits for the MariaDB interface. I do th know the MariaDB side quite well, however, so it's one my one redeeming quality. On this,、uh, as you can see, the,、um, there's the references from where it、uh, happens.、Um, if、um, have any doubts, I'll, I'll push this up a, a bit later. MariaDB has had plugins for quite a, a number of years、um, on various aspects, some of its various types, as I've listed there.、Um, can you hear me okay, or is this too echoey? It's fine. Okay, good. That's a bit worried.、Um, so there's been user-defined functions、uh, since the MySQL days、uh, on that, and I'll run through an example of that later.、Uh, there's a storage engine that's、uh, implemented as a plugin interface.、Um, it's not actually implemented in Rust,、um, but just listing it as there is there、uh, didn't really take off. The ones I haven't struck out、um, with tools are actually ones that can actually be implemented quite easy in Rust. So the the full text parser、um, just helps out the indexing of the full text engines.、Uh, Daemon parser is just a generic、um, background process、um, a plugin type. Information schema plugins、uh, deliver results into the information schema tables of MariaDB,、um, so you can you know create your effectively own table、uh, there if you want to expose information there.、Uh, audit plugin, there's a, a bunch of、uh, points in the code、uh, where you can get like callbacks into the audit plugin to do whatever action.、Uh, replication, yes,、um, to do with replication. I won't go into that. Authentication. You can write actually your own authentication mechanism on the server side.、Uh, if you do that, you've obviously got to do the client side implementation as well, and MariaDB、um, and all the the client utilities have the ability to、uh, dynamically load a client plugin、uh, into it. But I'll get to do that later. Password validation. Pretty easy.、Um, you know, password in, boolean back. And there's also an encryption plugin, but、um, it's more actually accurately put as like a key management plugin.、Um, there are encryption bits in there, but it's totally optional. So if you wanted to do a key management plugin that、um, authenticates against some、uh, existing Kubernetes service or that kind of thing, you can write that kind of plugin、uh, in Rust now, and、uh, you don't have to implement cryptography. Um, you can just let the default implementation do、um, AES、uh, over that, and that's, I guess, because the the MariaDB already has、uh, storage encryption, and that's where it falls in. So it's around the the storage encryption on that.、Uh, there's a new data type、um, plugin.、Um, so、uh, for those at, at the talk the other day, things like、uh, INET. Four INET six、uh, UUIDs are all actually implemented as plugins within the server code,、um, but with a little bit of、um, Rust,、um, you can actually write your own data types、uh, in the the same way that probably Postgres has done for many years. But you know, we'll catch up eventually.、Uh, a and last of all, there's a function type,、um, and this is much more a rich interface to、um, Effectively, how the server writes its plugins on that. So I'm going to start with、um, user-defined functions.、Uh, in the SQL, we've got、uh, a syntax that creates a function. 
um, and then you need to just specify its return type and a shared library. And the shared library is what we're going to be uh, developing in Rust. Uh, in that, the theory of it in UDFs, they made it really, really simple, um, which is why there's a, a more complicated function one later. But effectively, there's an initialization routine that's called um, as the SQL parser goes through and says, well, okay, we're going to need that function, um, and that allows you to perform any initialization you need. There's a processing function that's called for every value. So if you're running a function over all the rows in a table, um, you'll get that process function called uh, with the whatever um, is passed as an argument every time. And there's an optional deinitialization routine at the end uh, to free up resources um, that you may have previously allocated. So the quick start guide, um, and this is um, straight from Trevor's documentation, um, is you do cargo, new lib, um, and create a, a, a function. That's a library, obviously. Um, it's got a crate type of um, C dynamic library, and that goes in your top level um, TOML file. Uh, and then you add uh, the um, UDF uh, plugin cargo uh, to that so you can actually uh, have access to all the, the, f the features there. So the, the aspects of it, um, you're uh, obviously going to make a, um, a structure that stores data. Um, if you don't need to store it, if it's a, a pure function that doesn't need any arguments or any state, um, it can just be empty, um, and that's fine. Uh, we're going to implement it as either a basic function or an aggregate function. So your aggregate functions are like your max and your min um, that you may have come across in X SQL, um, so you can implement those uh, as well. Or a basic function that has like one value in, one value out. And that kind of thing. So there's a bit of details there, but um, we'll get to the example now. So if we look at the example, this is, I guess, the full TOML file from creating a UUID function. Um, and so it's got a couple of dependencies, uh, a license, um, and usual information that you're mu probably much more familiar than me about. So the function um, is implemented here. So we uh, there's a bunch of helpers that Trevor wrote in the prelude. Uh, we implement a um, empty types as we see, um, and the the function is a UUID to binary. So it takes its text form of a UUID and pushes it out as um, a compressed um, binary blob. Uh, as I mentioned previously, there's an init function. Um, it takes a, a bunch of configuration and arguments. So in the init function, you've got to just validate, you know, there's the right number of arguments uh, to the function uh, and they're of a right type. Um, so here we, get, um, you know, takes um, one or two arguments and it, and it uh, operates on that. Uh, and yep, and then in the config we kind of uh, set things based on the arguments, I believe. Yep, something like that as to what it's forcing it to. The process function, um, I guess fairly simple that it sort of takes the value that sort of came in um, and we've already validated the, the right number, right number of Hello? Yep. Um, so we take the bytes, uh, we copy it from the slice, and um, we, you know, compress it down using some existing hex functions. Uh, and uh, at the end of it, we return it. Um, there's an option to swap it if it's a particular form, and we return a successful result at the end. So quite simple on that. On the SQL, uh, to load it up, uh, this is a UUID to binary function. 
uh, returns a string and it's from the shared library. And we just use it in SQL um, exactly like any built-in function uh, and the, the uh, MariaDB server has the logic to look up the fact that it's a UDF and make all the calls out to it appropriately. For a more complicated example, there's an aggregate. Well, um, as I say, more complicated, it's not much more complicated. Uh, as you kind of expect, if you're doing an aggregate of a set of data, there's going to be an add function. Um, and, and there's a clear function at the end to allow you to reset back to the state. Uh, what happens is also you've got um, uh, window functions that sort of do a, a rolling uh, aggregate. So um, this might be, uh, that's why there's an additional remove functionality. Um, so you, if you're doing a, a rolling average over a window in SQL, uh, using the window functions that have been there for probably five years now, um, that you can actually write UDF functions around those. Uh, so we've got a clear function uh, that is called at the beginning of the group, an add function that is called per additional row that is actually processed through the UDF, and a remove function at the end. So if you're doing a um, remove the value at the end, of so if it's a rolling average, at the, the remove you're, you're taking off uh, whatever that first value was uh, to ensure that the result is still correct. Uh, and like before, you know, that, that process function will actually give you the, the final result that's called at the end. Um, I should have mentioned that. Oops. Uh, did mention it now. <laughs> uh, encryption plugins, um, I ran out of a little bit of time to implement it, but effectively there is two functions. There's a get key function that returns um, just a um, binary blob of data of a fixed length that is effectively AES uh, encryption key of a, a particular length. And there's a get latest key version. So what happens in the server, there's an ability to rotate through keys uh, and in, inside these functions you'll be either creating or fetching your keys from somewhere um, and also uh, expiring them out um, as needed. So, and yeah, the, that UDF um, framework for that is already implemented. I'll just actually show you, I guess, some of the documentation that's been up there. Uh, this is for like, I guess, a basic trait um, and I guess covers all the sorts of things. Um, and what is also available in this uh, crate is a bunch of helper uh, functions around uh, the initialization, the processing of our arguments uh, and that kind of thing that are all, I guess, passed in through uh, the, the C interface of the MariaDB server. Um, yeah, and there's more examples up there. Uh, so in conclusion, there's um, a bunch of projects in addition to those uh, crate URLs that I showed and that's actually basically how you write plugins. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, any questions? Everyone? your free memory at the end uh, and um, yeah uh, not a lot the, the type safety of the rust is actually built in so you, as long as you don't violate the constraints there um, the, you can't actually do much wrong on that side yes Uh, you can implement your own locks within, 
sorry, you can implement your own locks within um, the, the framework. Um, if you, uh, I think I've seen in some of the AWS uh, uh, implementation of something else in the plugins that it effectively uh, had a lock around, you know, not doing too many requests to their server at the same time. Um, and as long as I guess you resolve them eventually by, you know, not holding a lock infinitely, I guess that's probably one of the expectations. Um, I guess one of the reasons there's been uh, not a lot of development on the C code on the UDF plugins is because uh, once you get it complicated that you can actually crash the server being a, a shared library but the, the type safety of the Rust makes it easy to go with. Uh, and also in the repositories there there's a, a way to you know build and effectively load your uh, plugin into a container and just run that in the environment. Um, but yeah, you can create threads, uh, that's fine. Um, not sure how forking off process would, would work, but I assume that will resolve itself eventually. <laughs> Any questions? Who wants to write a plugin? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Wait, wait, wait. 刚刚是说哪一个麦克风？我有点问题。